Hello everyone, I've got a difficult integral to share with you today, and here it is, is the integral with respect to x of 1 over x to the 1 over n plus x to the 1 over n plus 1, where this parameter n here is a positive integer. Now, this is a generalization of an integral that I looked at in a previous video where I specifically considered the case where n equals 2. Uh, so now let's see how this uh, generalizes. Now we're going to do it by substitution, and the substitution we're going to do is to let x be some new variable t raised to the power of n times n plus 1. Now the reason for doing that is because n times n plus 1 is the lowest common multiple of n and n plus 1 because they're two consecutive integers and so when we do this substitution the fractional powers on the denominator of the integrand will turn into integer powers and the integral is going to going to be a bit more approachable that way so if we uh, make this substitution we also have to find dx in terms of dt so just by differentiating uh, this definition up at the top right using the power rule we find that dx is n times n plus 1 and uh, let's also expand the brackets, uh, we're going to get t to the power of n squared plus n, but then we've got to subtract 1 from the power rule, and then we get a dt at the end there. Alright, so let's go ahead and do that substitution. Um, so i, the integral i is going to be, well, we will have a constant prefactor of n times n plus 1, right? This thing here, that's just a constant, we can take it out the front times the integral of um, t to the power of n squared plus n minus 1 over, now when we do the substitution on the denominator, x to the 1 over the, sorry, x to the 1 over n becomes t to the n plus 1, and x to the 1 over n plus 1 becomes uh, t to the n. And then we've got our dt as well. And notice that actually all of the, um, well, the, the numerator and the denominator have a common factor of t to the n, right? Because there's an n here, and an n here, and an n there as well. So we could divide everything by t to the power of n, and just simplify this a bit to get n, n plus 1, times the integral of t to the n squared minus 1 dt over just t plus 1, right? So we've cancelled down, cancelled a factor of, of t to the n from um, the top and the bottom of our integrand. So, how are we going to integrate this thing t to the n squared minus 1 over t plus 1? What I'm going to do is use polynomial long division as we did uh, in the case where we looked at um, the n equals 2 case, right? So, let's set up that polynomial long division. Um, and so, we are taking t to the n squared, uh, let me write that out a bit more nicely, t to the n squared minus 1, and we're dividing it by t plus 1. Let's see what's going to happen. So we take our t to the n squared minus 1, divide it by that t over on the left there, um, and that just gives us t to the n squared minus 2, right? Because we've just decreased our power by 1 by dividing by t. Then we take this t to the n squared minus 2, multiply it by t plus 1, and put the result underneath uh, here. So that's going to give us t to the n squared minus 1, plus t to the n squared minus 2. Then we do a subtraction, this thing at the top minus this uh, second row here. When we do that subtraction, what are we left with? Well, the first terms cancel, and we just get minus t to the n squared minus 2. All right, so let's just do a couple more iterations of this procedure to, to get a feel for, for what's going to happen. Right. So next, we're going to take our minus t to the n squared minus 2, divide it by t. Again, that decreases the power by 1, and so we also have a minus sign this time, it's going to be minus t to the n squared minus 3. We then take that minus t to the n squared minus 3, multiply it by all of that stuff, uh, the divisor, and we get minus t to the n squared minus 3, minus, sorry, minus 2, uh, and then minus t to the n squared minus 3. We do a subtraction, the first terms cancel, and we just get t uh, to the n squared minus 3, right? And so because we don't actually know the value of n, uh, it's not clear where to stop, like how, how many iterations of this um, should we do. So let's have a think about that. Now, what we can write based on, on this result, you can see it's going to be kind of uh, cyclic, right? Um, if we did the next iteration, we would find that we get uh, plus 
t to the n squared minus 4. And so because you're dividing by t each time, you're just making this power smaller and smaller each time. Um, but you are also changing the sign each time. So we've got a plus here, a minus here, a plus here, uh, and then the next one would be a minus, and so on. So there's a couple of patterns uh, emerging there. And based on that, we can write, uh, let's write out what this is going to be, t to the n squared minus 1 over t plus 1. Uh, that is going to be, um, well, this uh, the result of the division we've got up here says that it is just t to the n squared minus 2 minus t to the n squared minus 3 plus t to the n squared minus 4 minus t to the n squared minus 5 and so on. Um, but where do we stop? Now we are going to stop when we can't do any more division, right? And um, at that point we're going to have some kind of remainder term and so We'll think in a bit more detail about what that remainder term actually is. For now, I'm just going to write it as, let's say, r of t, some function depending on t, uh, divided by t plus 1. In other words, this r of t is the bit that you can't actually do the division on. Okay, um, And so to write this in a slightly nicer form, let's use summation notation. Um, and so all of this stuff before the remainder term, that can be written concisely as the sum, where k runs from 2 up to, uh, well, okay, let's leave that blank for now. Um, think about what that upper limit is. We're going to get a factor of minus 1 to the k, which is just because the sign is alternating plus, minus, plus, minus, and so on. That minus 1 to the k takes care of that. Um, and then uh, we just get t to the power of n squared minus k, right? Because it's n squared minus 2, then n squared minus 3, minus 4, and so on. Um, all right, and so when do we stop? Well, we stop when we can't do any more division, which is basically when this t to the n squared minus k becomes uh, just t to the 0, right? Because you can't divide t to the 0 by t. You know, we're dividing by this t over here. And so we have to stop once this index, the power to which we're raising t becomes 0. In other words, once k equals n squared. So the upper limit of this sum is going to be uh, n squared. Right, and then what's our remainder going to be? Um, well, we are going to be left with just because there's the sign keeps alternating, right? We're just going to get minus one to the k, uh, sorry, to the n squared plus one, okay? Because the the last term in the sum corresponded to k equals n squared, and so if we go to the next term, the sign has flipped one more time, um, and so it's now minus 1 to the n squared plus 1, um, and then that has to be divided by uh, the divisor t plus 1. Okay, so I know there, there might be a more elegant way to derive this result, um, but this is, uh, I don't know, a fairly fairly straightforward way of thinking, thinking about it just in terms of polynomial long division. Okay, so we've arrived at that result, and so this is now in a form that we can actually integrate. So let's put this back into our integrand. Um, so let's go back up to the top left. And what we're going to find is that our integral is now just nn plus 1 times the integral of, well, the sum where k goes from 2 to n squared of minus 1 to the k uh, t to the n squared minus k. And then this remainder um, bit, which is just minus 1 to the n squared plus 1 over t plus 1. Uh, and then that's with respect to t. This is easier than it looks because we can just use the power rule on this first, uh, well, on this, this kind of summed term, right? Because we just have t to some power. And so we can just increase that power by 1 and divide by the new power. And so what's going to happen is we'll get nn plus 1 times uh, the sum where k goes from 2 up to n squared um, of, so it's going to be minus 1 to the k times t to the n squared plus 1 minus k, because we just in increased the power by 1 because we've integrated, and then we've got to divide by that new power, n squared plus 1 minus k. And then this final term over here uh, just integrates nicely to um, Remember, we've got a prefactor n, n plus 1. Then we've got our minus 1 to the n squared plus 1. And then we just get natural log of t plus 1 
and then our very important constant of integration at the end. All right, so we're pretty much done, actually. Um, we just have to substitute x back into this, right? Because we started with an integral in terms of x, so our final result should be in terms of x, not in terms of t. And we can just use our definition of x in terms of t up at the top right here um, to, to re-substitute x back in. Okay, so let's write out our final result um, somewhere down here. So i is going to be... Uh, so um, I'm going to write it as the sum where k goes from 2 to n squared of uh, minus 1 to the k. Then we've got our n, n plus 1. And then we have x to the power of n squared plus 1 minus k divided by um, this stuff up, up at the top right, which is n, n plus 1, right? So we've got to divide by n n plus 1 in that index, then we take all of that uh, and divide by n squared plus 1 minus k. Um, so that's our kind of summed term, and then we just have to add on the log term, which is plus n n plus 1 minus 1 to the n squared plus 1 times the log of x to the 1 over n n plus 1 plus 1 and then plus a constant, all right? So it's a pretty long expression. Basically what we've got is this uh, polynomial term at the beginning where you've got all these um, all these terms which are just x raised to some power with this coefficient uh, that depends on n and k. And then we always get our last term is a log term which comes from the remainder of the polynomial um, division. So there you go. You can check that that works. Um, it's consistent with what we derived for the specific case of n equals 2. Um, but now we know how to do it for, for any um, value of n. And uh, final point, actually, uh, is to note that this sum goes from k equals 2 to n squared. And so it kind of looks like it's not going to work if n equals 1, right? Because n squared would then be 1, and you're trying to sum from 2 to something smaller than 2. Um, actually, it does work when n equals 1 as well. It's just you don't get this um, this summation term at all, and you just get the, the log term. So there you go. There is our general result.